Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the HJC R41 helmet. This is HJC's top line race helmet. It's a version of the one worn by MotoGP racers like Paul Spargaro. It's, as you might expect, a very focused racing helmet, which is approved by the FIM for use in international bike races like MotoGP and also the Isle of Man TT. And it's also approved to the latest ECE 2206 standard for road use. The shell on this helmet is made from HJC's PIM Plus composite fibers, which includes carbon fiber. And this size medium shows 1529 grams on our scales for a size medium. I'd say that's pretty normal for a race helmet like this. That is without the high speed spoiler fitted, and that adds another 119 grams if you decide to stick that on. The spoiler comes in the box with the helmet, so if you're either expecting to hit 200 mile an hour or if you want to look like you're expecting to hit 200 mile an hour, you've got that available to you. I didn't have it fitted when I wore this helmet for a session at Cabo Park as I knew I wasn't going to hit MotoGP speeds. I got up to about 130 mile an hour and stability was fine in stock trim. If you do want it on the lid, it fits by slipping lugs under the lip of the standard spoiler and then sticking down these self-adhesive strips on the add-on bit. So venting from this helmet is comprehensive. The upper of two chin vents here flows air from the top of the chin bar over the breath deflector and towards the inner surface of the visor. Then the smaller lower vent allows some air to come straight through the chin bar to outlets either side of your mouth. On top, there are three switches. The central one covers a hole that leads directly to the forehead and then the two other switches each reveal two holes that draw in a direct flow of air. This air can then travel through channels in the EPS impact liner and it can escape through five vent holes at the rear of the lid, which all lead to this area under the stock spoiler. I found the venting on this helmet to be pretty good actually when I wore this on track with a decent flow of air coming in on what was actually a very warm evening. The visor for this lid is a new one for HJC. It's the HJ35 if you're interested in code numbers and it gives a good depth and breadth of vision. It's protected against misting by a Pinlock 120 insert, which is the highest grade available, and that insert comes in the box with the helmet. It also has posts on the outside to fit tear-offs for racing, and there are some tear-offs included in the box with the helmet. The visor comes off with a toolless mechanism, but it's not what I'd describe as quick release. The FIM standard for international racing is a bit more demanding in the way visors are secured to the helmet, so this one is actually screwed to the lid. There's a turning wheel that you lever out to undo the fastener and then you unscrew it so there's no need for a screwdriver but as I said it's not a fast change and also there's a little collar between the visor and the mounting screw that can fall out on occasions so it's always worth taking care not to lose that. The R41 comes with a clear visor as standard and at current prices an additional visor is £54.99 and that's whether you need a light tint, a dark tint for racing or a replacement for the clear visor. The visor lifting and lowering tab on this helmet is different from the rest of HJC's R4 range because this one sits to the left of centre rather than in the middle. There's only one intermediate stage between visor up and visor down and it doesn't take much of a push against the seal to get full closure. Then if you want it locked down, the sliding tab on the chin bar draws across to lock that visor in the down position. To get the cracked position, which gives you a small amount of air flowing to the inside, you slide that tab over before lowering the visor and then it blocks off the last few millimetres of travel. So let's move to the inside. The comfort liner for this lid is in three parts. There's a skull pad and two cheek pads, and as you'd probably expect, it's all removable for washing. The top section of each cheek pad is thinned out to give room for spectacle arms, and the whole lining is treated to be antibacterial and also to dry quickly. Behind the liner, there are speaker recesses for people who want to fit an intercom. They're a decent size, those recesses, and even the bigger 45 millimetre Cardo speakers would fit in this helmet quite neatly. The R41 isn't prepared for HJC's smart intercoms, but in the owner's manual, HJC point out a good location for a universal intercom. Now, I could slide a clamp mount for an intercom between the shell and the EPS liner quite easily, and I'd be happy enough fitting an intercom to this helmet. The last bit with the interior, the strap does up with the D-ring, just as any race helmet should, and you can take the strap covers off to wash them if you need to. The UK importer's blurb for this helmet is quite pointed in saying this lid is for racers and that it's not for, quotes, pottering around him. They say it lacks the niceties a road rider would expect, but I can only really see a couple of bits that this helmet is possibly lacking in that sense. First, there aren't many interim stages of opening for the visor. You get up, middle, down. Some riders are definitely not going to like that. You don't get a sun visor, but 
race helmets don't have sun visors, it's just a fact. Maybe the other bit that's missing is a plush comfort liner. This size medium helmet is a bit thin in that regard and the size large has the same nine millimeter thickness liner around the head. It's not exactly cosseting and you need to hope the internal shape of this helmet suits you really as there's not much foam to soak up any pressure. I have to be honest and say my use of this helmet has been limited as my head is just the wrong shape for it. The size was right, I couldn't have gone up to a large, but putting my head in this size medium R for one was like putting a square peg in a round hole. So I managed one session on track on a Triumph Speed Triple 1200RR where I found the lid was just pressing too hard against my head and it was distracting me from riding. Now I was able to learn that the venting is pretty good and the peripheral vision the same, although neither are really on the same level as the Shoei X SPR Pro that I wore on the same track evening. Now I'd assume that that discomfort was caused by the track speeds and afterwards I gave it a go on the road as well, but it only took about five miles to realize the issue wasn't really anything to do with speed, it just doesn't suit my head. And after 35 miles I had to give up wearing this helmet as it was just too uncomfortable for me. It's a bit odd as I've worn all sorts of Arthas over the last 12 years. I've worn the 10, the 11, the 70, the Arthur Max, the Arthur 90, and all of those have fitted me really well. They've actually been some of the most comfortable helmets I've worn in that time. But the interior shape of this helmet just doesn't suit me. There's not admittedly a huge amount for anyone else to learn from that, except that I wouldn't assume this helmet will fit you just because you already fit nicely into an HJC R for lid. Anyway, let's move on to essentials like sizes, approvals, and pricing. The R41 comes in sizes from double extra small up to double XL. There are four shell sizes. The smallest shell covers helmet sizes double XS and extra small. The next one up covers small and medium. Large gets its own shell and then XL and double XL share the biggest of the four shells. You've probably got the idea already, but it's approved to the latest ECE 2206 for the road by the FIM for international races, and it's also got the ACU gold stamp so it can be used on UK circuits. That means it's got the best series of certifications that you can currently expect from any helmet. As we record this, the R41 costs 64999 in plain colors, 69999 in graphics like this Senin scheme, and it goes up to 79999 for the priciest designs. HJC's quality has come on in leaps and bounds over the last 20 years. Two decades ago, no one would have spent much more than 120 quid on an HJC. But now they're becoming a much bigger player in premium helmets as well. The R41 didn't work for me, but if its internal shape suits the external shape of your skull, then it might just work for you. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the HJC R41 helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.